So here's a fighter that a lot of people have been talking about here during fight week, really just because of the nature of his skill set. I haven't seen much in terms of a glaring weakness on film in the fights. It, it doesn't seem like there is one. You know, when you're watching the film and you're critiquing him, there's not much to critique. When you're trying to break down where the weaknesses are, there aren't many. The guy can wrestle, he can grapple, he's got tremendous cardio, great top control, insane durability. He's got it all. He's one of the best mixed martial artists we have seen come on the scene for a long time. But he's got to continue to prove it if he wants to stay where he is right now in the UFC. And perhaps his greatest asset, at least thus far, has been his instinctual nature in the octagon, right? Just knowing which skill to employ at the right time, and certainly he's got essentially every skill you would want in an MMA arsenal. Topuria undefeated when he arrived at the title fight against Alexander Volkanovsky, and he was able to break through and get the job done. There is an undeniable sophistication to his game. He is a layered striker. He can grapple, he can wrestle. I haven't seen anything resembling a weakness on film, but I think his greatest asset is his ability to stay calm, cool, and collected in combat, and also to exercise some patience when it comes to pursuing a finish. He's one of the best finishers in the division, but it is never forced, it is never bad out of hell, and that's why right now he's the hunted and not Volkanovski at 145 pounds. Well, so much UFC history has played out for a team over the arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Plenty more where that came from tonight. The athletes are ready to go. Our tail the tape for this featherweight fight. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. It's time! Five rounds in the UFC featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, D And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, Ilya Elmagador from Moria! All right, Herb Dean, third man Ready in the fight. octagon for this one. Ready. Good. All right, here we go. Another big night for the MMA leader from Las Vegas, Nevada's T-Mobile Arena. There's a lot of seminal moments in this building. I can think of one. It was a big one for me at UFC 226. But, John, also UFC 200, I've got this hand across the cage from Anderson Silva in that arena. This is a place where big fights happen tonight. Oh, guillotine, guillotine here. That guillotine is tight. It's got to be it. It seems so tight. Chose a much worse position over here. That's a big Posture's up now. Oh, and delivers. Huge punch to the head there. These ground strikes are starting to add up. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment. Yep. Well, wow, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency. Toporti has got his hand looking for a guillotine choke. Oh, that guillotine is officially tight. Oh, countering. It looks like with a bottom through choke. And oh, submission defense on full display there. He said that he was very aware of what this guy brought to the octagon and it showed in that defense. These are big shots, and they're not glancing blows. When he's throwing, he is landing. Submission attempts and bunches, another one for him. What a tight arm bar. Arm still not out of harm's way yet. Look at all the pressure on the arm. Oh, he slipped the arm out. What an escape. He slipped his arm out, and now he lives to fight another day. Under two minutes now to go in round one. 
All right, well, both fighters pretty comfortable on the ground, DC, but you gotta be very careful hanging out here for too long if you're his opponent. Takes his back now. Shirts, ground and pound. Oh, Five minutes in the books. All right, take two, three. Okay, listen. When this fight gets to the ground, I'm okay with you being on top, but I need you to keep your position. Well, you did great. All right, so a wild round and a wild sequence there on the ground, DC. Talk us through the highlight. Yeah, man, you see two high-level grapplers going after it. One guy gets an advantage. The other guy always has a response. We thought it was over. A lesser opponent would have been submitted, but these two are two of the best grapplers in the entire UFC. It's blocked. Oh, great combination of strikes there. side control DC this is where you want to be now because you get to make your opponent decide they try to turn back into you you can attack guillotine if they turn away to try to get to your knees you throw your hooks in and you got all your rear choke submissions Topodius has got full mount now Ooh, going for a leg lock your hook looks tight oh somehow he gets out fantastic submission D Interesting there as he just decides to let him back up. So a much different approach for him here in this second round. He was a little bit tentative in round one, a little bit of a feeling out process. Now he has clearly found his rhythm, found the range. We'll see if he can continue with more activity here in round two. Big shot lands for both guys. Under a minute now to go. Hooked onto an arm here. Oh, he's got that submission tight now. Oh, that arm's still in trouble, champ. Oh, he's out of danger. Great submission defense. He's able to take his arm out and stay safe. You'll see what he does here. He postures up and lands to the head. Another ground and pound strike lands. And here it sounds on round two. All right, there's the horn. How about that round? He got him badly there early on. You thought that maybe that was going to be the beginning of the end. At the very least here, got to think he's going to try to get him out of here in this next round. J.A., he's on skates. I yeah. mean, he was on skates. 
His ability to withstand that avalanche is commendable, but he has to change something as he approaches the next round. All right, so let us now check out some of the action in that round, DC. There was a whole lot of it, including a stunner upstairs that nearly closed the show. It was a lot of action. It was back and forth action, but the big moment was that big strike to the head that landed that put him on wobbly legs Ready and in fight. survival mode. Ready. Luckily, he made it to the end of that round. Third round underway. Inside leg kick lands. Oh, left hook to the head, it's blocked. Try to establish that jab. So Portia gets caught with that punch. Got to show up the defense. Single leg takedown. He's isolating an arm. Oh, it's getting very, very deep. Submission. He told us this week, I gotta keep these judges out of it. Mission accomplished. Absolutely. He is a phenomenal grappler. He said that he held the advantage there, and that would show itself in the fight. He proved that, and he gets a submission victory. Amazing. The official decision is in. We said it inside the octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Deans called a stop to this contest at one minute, eight seconds of the third round. For the winner, by submission, Diego Well, the celebration is on in his corner, and hard to blame these guys, sort of waiting to exhale, get a huge win tonight, and not just the win, but they get it by submission. They knew what they had in front of them. They knew how tough a competitor his opponent was, but they also knew that if they could get this fight to the ground, they could find a submission. They found a submission, he got his hand raised in the way that he loves the most.